the problem with the invisible wound and mental issues and depression and suicide is it's it's silent it comes with no noise no warning and it's a battle between just yourself and it will f sneak up on you when you're at idle I came to be here was uh, Dave's wife uh, Jamie and I had met uh, some years ago at a um, at a suicide awareness uh, kind of event and uh, talking with a bunch of other folks and families uh, their experiences and hoping that what would come out of that were going to be some solutions or at least some approaches forward and the first time I met her uh, she read David's letter that he left behind and I was immediately moved immediately touched uh, I've, I felt it um, his words just cut right into me and my heart went out to Jamie went out to her family and Kind of in my head back then, I was like, man, whatever, whatever she needs, whatever my brother needs, even though I didn't know him, I'll do anything for them. I won the raffle that got me that knife from Neil. And uh, after talking with Ollie and getting the opportunity to, uh, to bring that knife home, uh, we had another opportunity to, to forge another knife. I had the honor of going to a Navy SEAL Foundation event and uh, was asked to make a knife so that they could donate it. And so I basically just told my story of uh, why I was there. I think a couple months had passed and Jamie called me up and said she was gonna be starting a new foundation in Dave's honor, the David Metcalf Invisible Wounds Foundation. And it was all gonna be based on suicide and how to prevent it and, and help folks dealing with those kinds of ideations. And she asked me if I would help out. And I said, I'm in. You tell me what you want. And she asked if I could call Neil out in Hawaii and see if he would do another blade for their inaugural event, the first one that they were going to do. I love what I do. I love the guys that, that I work with. And I do anything for them. And talking with Ollie about leaving the community better than what I came into it as. That's a huge motivation and driving factor. One of the things that helps me is speaking about a situation that pains you. The more you say it, the less power it has over you, you know, and it's important. And I wanted to be part of that healing process for her. And then, then it came about from that conversation with left the lasting impression with me, then you and me talked and then we agreed to do this, what we're doing. I called Neil and of course he said yes. He said, but I had to come out here and help build it. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Um, but then as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, how cool would it be? You know, I've heard Neil talk about breaking chains, uh, the chain of events of happening, breaking the cycle of things happening uh, when it comes to suicide. And I just kept thinking about chains and I was like, well, you know, you can have a link of chains that kind of connect things together and it can be very strong. He was, he was a mentor. So I met him back in 2011 and 
the shop that we were at, he was the mo more experienced guy that was in the shop, somebody to look up to. So just resilient, tough as nails. I looked up to him as a big brother, as a mentor. A lot of what he talked about is how he was changing due to his past life, which was as a SEAL before he became a uh, PA. I didn't want Ryan to, to think that there wasn't anything that he, he couldn't contribute to. And I wanted him to feel the same thing I did with the first blade that I made with you, Neil, of just a release and that, hey, it's gonna be okay. I always tell people this, like I met Ollie and I looked Ollie in the eyes and we both were like, we're fucking brothers. Like, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I have my three sons and then I have the people that I've chosen to let be inside of my circle of chosen family. So coming out here and forging this knife, what I found out is taking something so, uh, so rough, so un just shaped, unformed, hard. You know, it's a piece of steel and uh, getting the opportunity to beat the crap out of it. It's actually kind of, kind of neat, kind of release some, some stress and some pressure into it. Building a knife, it was one of the most powerful things I could say I've ever done in my life. And when you make a blade, when we came out here with Ryan, you know, I, I let him know. I said, hey, I want you to feel whatever is inside you with this, uh, with what's in you and what, what, what happened to David and why we're doing all this. I want you just to be thinking about that when you're making this, when you're making this blade. Because whatever is in you is gonna come out into this thing and it's gonna come out of you and it's gonna be free from you. But th there's so much energy and I can only explain the way that, that I feel for me when, when I made it for the first time and for the reasons that I did it. Um, it, was, it was emotional and there was a lot of pain that came out of me that went into that thing and now I can look at that knife and it's just, it's such a happy thing for me now. It took my pain away and, and now I look at it as just, man, I, I was cleansed. I was cleansed. Ryan was probably one of 1% 1 of people that naturally go into knife making. Um, he wasn't blinded by ego or strength or toughness. He went at it a very decisive way. He came in listened, focused, and applied it. And that's why his knife came out so good. And that's why he has all the qualities of being a craftsman. I definitely he has pride in what he's doing. He never opts for the easy way out. And it was a, it was a pleasure to see, you know. You know, we were talking about this earlier how, how raw it was initially, how you could just beat the shit out of it, let out that, that tension, let out that pressure, let out that stress. It felt good. And that's what you're thinking on. You know, a lot of it was, it's, that's the only thing that matters at that point. You could just wail away at it if you want. Later on in the process, it was, it was peaceful. Get your mind off of things. When you're, you're sanding it down, just spending the time just, just polishing it and that attention to detail and your mind does start drifting and it was a constant reminder of going back to Dave, why I'm here, what I'm doing, making things perfect. Dave was a perfectionist. Dave was, you know, he, he read everything. He knew like what was wrong with them before anybody else knew what was wrong with them. So I relate myself to that a little bit too and putting that into the blade makes me closer to Dave, makes that blade that I made more intentional to Dave. Yep. Perfect timing, man. Maybe we should have done it earlier. Hey, yeah. <laughs> People on the other side that are gonna watch this video probably don't know that during a, a, a moment in Ryan's uh, talk. I mean, it just started pouring, pouring rain. You couldn't hear anything. 
you know but again it's it's just power and energy feeding off of power um you know me personally i just think that's david saying hey it's okay buddy you know we're, we're washing pain away you guys are doing something good and it's taking going to take pain away from other people i tell people i tell people all the time when they buy a knife from me it's a problem that i got out and i got a lot of problems so that's why i make so many knives you know and that only transfers to specific people and uh and it's all about being in the moment and being accepting and being aware of who you are you know because people are blinded by ego and and like look at me how tough i am i can hit so hard like there was none of that here um you know when when the part that i saw that was the real bleed out for Ryan was the hand sanding. I literally went over there and I noticed that when he was in here, like he was on his table, there was a lot of things going on. Everybody was still talking story, we're all friends, you know, everyone's making jokes, shit like that. And that's why I put him out there. I told Brian, put him out there, let him bleed out there. You know what I mean? So he can be alone with his thoughts. There's too much of us in here. So I said, told Brian, put him out there, let him just figure it out, you know. And when I went out there, one time I went out there and I looked at him, and he had this fucking waterfall coming off his forehead, just draining down, and he had it in his eyes. It left his body. He was like, Fuck. you know what I mean? And and that's and that and that's what it's about. Like people. People underestimate the power of completing something and making and creating something from your heart, soul, and mind. It takes all three to make a knife. I think the biggest thing is, what I didn't expect is after you quench the, the blade, how fragile it becomes, how it can just shatter. And it made me kind of realize that, that humans are the same way that it might have a hard, tough exterior, but there's things in life that, that might make you want to shatter. Once you temper it, that's where it becomes hard. That's where you can sharpen it. That's where you can grind it. I didn't really know that. I just thought, you know, it was, it was always going to be hard. But in the end, I guess everything has a breaking point. You know, when Jamie read that letter, the first time I, I, I heard it, everything that David was saying, to some degree, I, I felt at some point in my life. It scared me, but I felt it. I, I could feel it in his words. I was experiencing those same things. There was things that I thought were out of my control, and I just didn't think it could get any better. And it's another thing that comes out of David's words that made me reflect back on when I struggled. You know, I was that close, about a half a pound of pressure from, from having the trigger fully pulled. Fortunately, I, I had a moment of clarity and that's the only reason that I'm still here. Issues and depression and suicide is, it's, it's silent. It comes with no noise, no warning. And it's a battle between just yourself and it will sneak up on you when you're at idle. Everything is going good. Life is great. Wife's happy. Kids are doing well. Career is going well. That's when it goes and touches you. Because as wolves or people that fight, we're so used to the fighting. And we get caught off guard, we get settled, we get content. And then all of a sudden there's no chaos to fight. There's no person to fight. There's, it's you, it's your mind. It's, it's the silent killer because when you're up against it and you're 
everyone's like brooding you on like because they know you're suffering or whatever it's easy that's why this organization is so important they was the first person to to change my mentality towards suicide and the option of suicide because my younger self believed that it was the quitter's way out it's the easy way out just turning off and you know being done with your problem and uh, knowing Dave and knowing who he is and how tough he was and how resilient he was, how he literally put the whole world on his shoulder, um, that changed my mind and, and the option that he chose. That changed my mind on, on how I view suicide now because I do feel that he did it for his family. He did it for other people. He is the most selfless person in the entire world. And I know that nothing could have broken him he would have been fine by himself, but he made this decision for other people. And it's, that's, that's the scary part. And that's the part where it gets really terrifying to think about, you know, who can be pushed to that level to where they, they choose that option. David left his words. He left his words that were gonna be basically a map. And this is where we start. And this is what he left behind for the rest of the guys, for our community, and goes, you know, this is what happened. Let's not let it happen again. So I said, Jamie, I'll do this as long as we build it on David's name and his legacy. And his legacy has to be what this foundation is gonna be about, what you're saying it's gonna be about, and we're gonna help prevent this from happening from it to anybody else. The thing that I couldn't get past is that I have a fear of my brain breaking all the time. And it's because I'm idle. It's because I've figured myself out. I had the struggles of being honest with what my weaknesses are and what I need to work on and what I, and you keep them, you know, in your mind and being honest with yourself is one of the hardest things and it's the only thing that saved my life but when you see someone that has figured the same things out as you do that from everything that I've ever heard about him that's what puts fear in me is my brain breaking not because I fear for myself because I fear for my sons you know it has nothing to do with us as people it has everything to do with the loved ones around us, you know, and so when I read his letter, all I thought about was my three boys and how important it is for us to protect our minds because I want to be there for all three of my boys. My boys are the most important part of my life. I always say that, you know, in the beginning, like, like knife making saved my life and it did, but it just was a one little step to giving me identity to being the person that I was destined to be, which is a father. And uh, the part about being a father is that I find the greatest joy in teaching my kids, you know, uh, what I know and, and protecting them from the bad, you know, that I experienced or what could experience. And that's why we need to keep every single person in this community and in other communities aware of that invisible wound, which is the mind. When he took his life, he had a lot of his research, a lot of his books in the garage next to him. And that's a glaring fact into what he wanted to draw attention to. Um, how he went about it, his brain was preserved. So donating that was a choice that Jamie made. And the foundation absolutely is studying what, what happened, you know, in his brain, what was going on, what, what was the problem. And that's what Jamie's foundation is, is, is pushing towards, is bringing 
doctors together and identifying what's happening within our community, especially the NSW community. Bringing the attention to, to the foundation and bringing people together and realizing the importance that this is, this is a serious problem. And from the beginning of the war till, till now, you're seeing especially a certain generation, which was Dave's generation, that is going through the, the struggles and you can't, it's, it's not physical, you can't, can't see it. It's not visual, you, you're not gonna identify it by saying this person needs help. It's gonna take a lot to, to move forward with this and, and there might not ever be a solution, but at the end of the day, there's always gonna be progress. And if that can help somebody, if that can help one person, I think it's worth it because the pain that it puts on, on friends, on family, on, on everybody, on the world, because if Dave is still here, you know, I feel like that he could give the world to anybody. And he's doing that in his death, so. But tying it all in with this uh, Invisible Wounds Foundation, it's now being a part of something. I don't want Ryan, I don't want anybody else to think about what ifs because there's still stuff that we can do. You know, and that's what this this foundation, this Invisible Wounds Foundation, is going to be a big part in helping that. One of my main purposes, other than doing the exact job that I was supposed to do as a SEAL, one of my just personal things that I always said that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this place better than I found it. Right? Sounds cliche, but it's true. I felt it in my heart. I said I have to leave this place better than I found it. And if I don't make the guys under me better than me when they get to my level, then I screwed up. I was being selfish because that meant I wasn't sharing everything that I knew. I wasn't giving them everything that I could to make them better. Being comfortable with saying that, you know, when you think of depression, you think of it as like some little bitch sitting in their room and wah wah is me. It's not. Sometimes it comes out in anger. Sometimes it comes out in in that people can hide it really well. You know, it's not just an emo in person sitting in their room. That's not what it's about. And so bringing awareness to this in all aspects so that we will never have to read a letter like that. One letter was the letter that we're gonna ring out into the world so that people know a badass like David pulled his ego down and exposed himself, his heart and his mind, even donated his mind so that it doesn't happen again and that we fight for that and we bring awareness to that for our kids, for our wives, for our family, for our friends, for our brotherhood, you guys, brotherhood of, our, of your guys' team, so that, so that in the end it becomes what I talked about in the beginning. You know, you can talk about something and you can take the power away from it, but you can talk about something and you can put power to it. And that's what we're doing here. And the younger generation need to know that, it, like you said, it is okay to, to talk about it. The stigma behind it needs to 100% go away um, because there's no shame in it. And Everybody and everything has a breaking point, and that's what this experience kind of shows me. But there's things in place that can make you more resilient and toughen you back up and, and a support network. And that's what all of you guys kind of showed, just the, the care and the, the easygoingness of this experience and, and lightening up the mood because, I mean, I, I didn't really know you guys before this and just, sharing you know the hospitality I'm, I'm forever grateful for that i kind of have two things when i think about something new starting you know much like coming here and making these knives right it's a whole forging process you're taking something that's nothing yet and hopefully at the end it's, it's something beautiful whatever it could be so i think it's fitting right that we came out here and Forge's knife with Neil Kamimura at his house. He took us in and we're forging a knife for something else that's being forged as we speak. This whole thing is coming together, right? And there's gonna be a process 
to the forging of this Invisible Wounds Foundation. And it's gonna take everybody watching this video, everybody that comes to these events and doing their part. This experience showed me how to turn something that's hard, rough around the edges, how it can become fragile, and then how you can turn it into something beautiful. The second thing I'll say is that everything I looked at in the SEAL teams was just about opportunity. Just give me the opportunity and I will go in there and I'll make it happen. And everybody that watches this, listens to it, hears it, whatever it comes to one of these events, I'll tell you right now, you have opportunity. Don't let it go to waste. Take advantage of it and make it happen. You know, like, what would you say to me? You know? I tell him thank you for knowing him. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you for the impact that he's had in my life. And just thank you for, for being my friend. Dad, I'm getting off the chair before you ask me something else. <laughs> uh, thank you, brother. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.